Hey fellow vault dwellers, it's Angry Turtle and today I have for you the Expedition Runner, the Stump Grinder build. And yes, it works full health, it works low health, it works with a lot of variations, so I will give you an idea. You are you are free to tweak it. It is powered by the dot damage, so it's damage over time. This is the key because all the new enemies in expeditions are weak to damage over time, which, which helps a lot. But without further ado, uh, let me showcase the build. So it is a melee build. This is a basic special distribution. Yes, I am high level, so I do have uh, a lot of extra special from my legendary cards. Although, it's not needed. You can absolutely go without. What you do need is hack and slash. That will be super helpful, as hack and slash do apply a melee dot to everyone who's hit. So that makes it incredibly powerful. Now. The perks, important ones. So, you want to be tanky. You don't want to easily die. So the important perks, uh, I have a lot of carry weight, I will skip it, but under strength, what's important? One rank of Barbarian, it's really worth it. It's 40 extra damage resist, and only one point. I have some slugger perks, you can slot in more if you have room. Blocker is important, incisor is important, and you could run extra swing speed if you can for your weapons. That will be definitely helpful. If I would not need something, I would have extra swing speed. If I would not the fact that I am carrying so many weapons, I would equip martial artist. I, I cannot. I have too much stuff. Then, super important, is sometimes you do need to complete a tato toss. So Grenadier and Fire in the Hall makes this particular mission way easier during the expedition. Endurance, I do recommend to stack in as much as you have from your free points. The important ones are Life Giver and Fireproof. Those two. So minimum seven Endurance. The more, the better. Under Charisma, Strength in Number 10, The Riser. And I'm actually running solo, but I will not be changing it. I will be showcasing this build solo. Solo is weaker, in a team is stronger. It's just how the game currently works. Every time you are on a team, your build will be stronger than solo. There is no exceptions. Then intelligence, what you really need is nothing. There is no essential perks. <laughs> I will be honest. Intelligence, you can have one. None of those perks is essential for this build to work. Under Agility, I do recommend Evasive. Born Survival is a must. Escape Artist is very handy. Adrenaline, at least rank 1, recommended. Under Luck, Serendipity only if you are bloodied. Ricochet, I strongly recommend this one. Class Freak, almost a must. Star Jeans, and Good with Salt, very handy. Not essential, but if you are a melee build, there's so many cool melee buffs that you can use, and one buff is essential, so you will need at least one foot. Of course, you can keep it inside your freezer, so good with salt is not essential either. So you can see, even though I have so many perks, how many did I list it as essentials? Not too many, so it's not so many required. Now the gear and mutations. Let's start from mutations. It's a melee build. And I run it mostly bloodied. And for this showcase, I'm running full health to show you the power of the dot and not the power of the bloodied. That's why I'm full health. So Adrenal Reaction is for bloodied. Bare Bones, that's for jumping. Carnivore, essential for this build. Eagle Eyes, handy for crits, not essential. Herd Mentality, very cool if you would be playing on a team. Marzupel for jumping, essential. Plug Walker, I have it because why not? Plug Walker is a dot, so can help. A Scully Skin for resistance, Speed Demon for speed, Talons if you plan to use an armed weapon. Otherwise, Twisted Muscles, that's for all melee. So Twisted Muscles, essential. The gear. This is a fun part. So, Sacrificial Machete 
is a very good choice. Recommended with weapon speed. Whatever prefix. Any prefix will work. Why this one? A lot of dot. You have bleed and poison. So only sacrificial machete, according to my knowledge, provides two different dots on it. If you don't have it, you can use more minor gauntlet with extra claw. It does bleed damage. And on top of that, there is a second dot that you have from the mutation if you use an arm from talons. It's adding additional bleed damage dot. So those weapons and the key weapon will be either Red Appa, which is Auto Axe, or Chainsaw. You need one of those. The best vampire power attack damage. That will be the best. And it will work. But that's the best. This is a key weapon. That's for tougher enemies. For mini bosses in expeditions, you switch to that. Now, armor. For armor, torn set. Any set of torn. That's extra 250 bleed damage with your attack. That's enough to kill most enemies in expedition in like no time. Usually doesn't even take 10 seconds. The tougher enemies will require extra bleed from your weapon added to it. Some enemies can probably kill themselves attacking you if you are wearing a torn armor. My set is not perfect. It's not an yielding. I need to craft an yielding one day. But that's the set. Torn armor, really good. If you don't have torn armor, it will be a little bit harder to pull this build. So I do recommend to get torn armor if you want to fully experience it. The dot from weapon alone can be a little bit low. As well, the dot from grenades will work wonders. So if you have pulse grenades, I will show you how well those work on expedition enemies. Surprisingly well. And even floater grenades. Floater grenades come with dots. So pulse grenade will kill them. When for comparison, nuka grenade will not. Even with demo expert and bloodied build, they will survive a nuka grenade. But they will not survive a pulse grenade. So let me demonstrate this build in action for you now. I do have a test expedition started. So thanks to this build, you should be able to easily speedrun expeditions solo or with a team. I do recommend with a team or that we can do solo. I'm solo now and I don't even have Lone Wanderer. So you can absolutely do it. Now, why this setup? Look what will happen if I will get lucky to pull explosion on one of those guys. Come on, he will die. Like that's a dot. But I want to show what happens when I get the explosion. Get, come on now, do it. Now, look. All of them dead. So area of effect kills them all. Normally you don't need to clear them all. I will show you what you're supposed to be doing. So when you have those fireworks, normally you will just slice one, run towards the firework, crouch to disappear and launch the firework. And the one that I sliced is already dead. So you don't need to do extra damage. One hit, it's dead over it's over for them one slice with this weapon now the grenade i promise to showcase the grenade let me try look at that spark dead this grenade after the reset patch even more powerful i think so you can easily kill them you don't need full damage as you see they die so that accelerates your grind a lot when you need to kill some of the enemies. So you just one swing, they dead, and sometimes the group of enemies is dead if you get this explosion. Everyone in this explosion radius is dead, thanks to the dot carrying over through the explosion from hack and slash legendary perk. And that's 50% chance when maxed out. So that's huge chance. So that's one thing, then we have our auto axe for tough enemies. I need to carry on for tougher enemy and I will show you. And the main reason for having escape artists is like their my looks like over there. My looks unfortunately do not die from dot. Those are my looks somehow immune. 
But if I crouch and I have escape artist, I can launch this firework in peace uninterrupted and run to another one so I can avoid fighting quite a lot when there is no need to fight. You just crouch and launch the firework in peace. You don't need to kill every enemy, but you have tools to kill them when needed. Oh, if you wonder about the melee foot, I said you need at least one. And I meant by that the melee foot that increased damage, as you can see here, 170% because of carnivore. I do have tasty Yao Guai roast, but basically all those tasty roasts that increase melee damage have this power now after the last patch. So you only need one. It's nice if you have more buffs, but you only need one. 170% damage bonus that do apply to poison from machete. Awesome. Maybe I will change a weapon. Other weapons work too. Okay, I think I have something. Oh, like even knuckles. I have knuckles for showcase to demonstrate that it's a bleed. It's not a weapon damage. Like knuckles barely have any, any weapon damage. But if I punch any of those competitors with these knuckles, it's dead. So I can just punch, punch. And emoji. Before I click on the emoji, it's usually dead competitor. So if you need to grind those emoji, it's as easy as that. Which is crazy. Now, the bosses are the only ones that dot is not enough. I can show you the dot. So that's the boss. If I would like to rely on the dot, you can see it's taking damage. So it is a bit of damage on those mini bosses from dot. But clearly you can see that is not enough. So that's why we have Red Appa, which is Auto Axe, or the Chainsaw. Chainsaw works exactly the same. I do have the Electrified one. Now I'm not focusing on the dot. I don't even know why he's not attacking me. But that's, that's a different story. Now, this Auto Axe will do wonders. And if you care about the time, that will be super fast. So you can see this auto axe does wonders and anything with the bleed will work for all the time run outside of mini bosses so more minor gauntlet machete or even knuckles those all those weapons will work or this guy will die from just hitting me yep so the torn just hitting me the torn is amazing blade and since the dot was buffed with the latest patch it's even easier to use it. I hope it's intentional that all the enemies inside the expeditions, all the new enemies are so weak versus dot. I hope it's intentional weakness. Oh, this competitor failed to take proper damage. But that's okay. It can happen sometimes. Now it's dead. So what has happened with the patch and dot being buffed like, all my melee buffs are boosting the dot part too. That's how the machete goes to 38 bleed and 189 poison. So machete, of course, the highest dot of all the weapons. I do recommend, if you can, sacrificial machete, the best. If you can run low health, your damage overall goes up. But as you are able to see, like, Juchi Batsuri, it's a tanky enemy. He went down in no time with automatic melee, auto axe or chainsaw. They both interchangeable. So this is the build. Let me know what you think. That's for speedrunning expeditions. I do it as a bloodied, but if you want to do it as full health, it works. The difference between bloodied and full health. Bloodied does a little bit more damage. Not crazy amount, a little bit more damage. And it's easier to die, but... Yeah, you have extra intelligence if you have an yielding and so on and so forth. If you go full health, you need way less perks, though. And it's very unlikely you will die. And that being said, this is everything you need to know to speedrun your expeditions now with Expedition Runner build. Speedrunner, Farmer, all the stamps, everything for you. Let me know what you think, and as always, see you in the next one.